a number of you out there might be very interested in trading but either you're not getting into it because you know there is a huge learning curve and you have no idea how to go about it and you have you might end up spending a good one or two years before you even make some bit of profit or the second factor is you have gotten into it and you're not making money why because there is actually a solid reason behind that and to solve this particular problem uh, copy trading was a new concept of sorts that came about a few years ago so what exactly is copy trading how can that help you become a better trader in crypto we'll talk about that in today's video let's start with the problem right uh, nitin kamath who essentially is the founder and ceo of zeroda which is for my global audience uh, an equivalent of robinhood in the us uh, that's the zeroda is an indian equivalent of robinhood now nitin kamath who runs such a large uh, firm and who deals with traders on a daily basis millions of trades go through his platform every day he made a very interesting statement in a blog he wrote about 2 years ago and he says less than 1% of active traders earn more money than a bank fixed deposit rate over a 3 year period in india a bank fixed deposit rate is about 5 6% or a little more than that right now so that means in 3 years an active trader or 99% of active traders don't even make 5% right less than 1% are making more than 5% uh, roi that's really bad right i'm sure i can, like i 100% trust this statistic because he runs such a large platform with so many uh, thousands of traders on it that he probably has this data right so if you are somebody like that what do you do like you know don't go by the social media instagram um, uh, you know kind of a crowd where they are posting profits whenever they they do make a profit but on the other days when they're losing they don't really post it. don't go by that if you're somebody who who definitely wants to try and make some money out of trading then copy trading might be for you so let's look at that today right what exactly is copy trading how do we how do you make some money um, it's very simple copy trading means that there are maybe 1% or less than that active traders who know how to make money who have spent 2 3 years who have who have been in the grind they now know how to break even or make some profit what essentially the uh, copy trading does is it helps you copy their signals it helps you copy their movement where, where are they and when are they entering when are they exiting it helps you copy that very easily and that that's the simple concept behind copy trading and it's a pretty hands off model you don't have to like you have to follow somebody and then put your parameters in how much you want to invest etc and after that the system takes care of it you don't really have to do much every time this person is uh, trading it it sort of mimics it for you and your uh, funds are deployed what's in it for the trader well he makes 10 or 20% or whatever that cut is uh, out of the profit that you make and you get to keep the rest that's about 80 or 90% depending on the platform so it's a win win for everybody that makes a lot of sense right but there is a lot of problems the problem is if you get into copy trading there are hundreds of traders now your you know your problem is really how do you choose which trader to follow right if you go to a platform like bybit or or huvi they you have like hundreds of these guys on the leaderboard and you have so many parameters on which they are ranked right there are so many numbers flashing here which one do you look at how do you decide who to follow well i have put together a few points that you must keep in mind while uh, doing uh, something like this and i'll walk you through each of them and in this whole thing i will compare two traders and i'll tell you how you can choose the better among them so what's in it for you let's start with this right the first thing the first absolute thing that you need to like really keep in mind is number of trading days plus consistency right if you go to the profile of any of these guys you'll see trading days uh, mentioned somewhere on bybit is right at the top it says 107 days for this particular trader uh it's about 33 days for this particular trader I would always go with the guy who has been in it for longer and who probably has uh, you know who's of course in profit but the person who has been in it for longer and who's consistent that means he's not making a trade today and then another trade 60 days later he's making trades like three times four times a week at least then that person is somebody that I would probably go with the second factor is number of trades plus percentage of winning trades right if you go to bybit you will see right here that the total number of transactions about 827 for this particular trader and he won about 720 of them right that's close to maybe 80 86 or 87% now if we look at this particular trader 
he did 11 transactions and he won 10 of those now whom will you follow right now this guy might have like a 91 92 percent kind of a strike rate the other guy has 87 but if you look at it he's got 87 percent right on a larger number of 827 trades so i would definitely go with this person then followers and money made right now look at the count of followers if now this guy has 208 followers uh, this particular guy has also 208 followers. Right? The next thing they need to check is the cumulative profit made for the followers, right? It says 107, uh, sorry, 1,707 uh, here. Whereas for the other trader, it's something like 47,000. So definitely this guy is, is beating him in that. Right? I've of course taken two extreme traders to uh, you know explain this. The, the next particular factor is number of open trades. Now, a lot of traders want to keep this ROI number very high. And hence, what they tend to do is, if they know that a particular trade that they have taken is bad, they keep the position open. Right? Uh, one way to look at it, if you go to a platform like Hubie, it shows you what the current orders are, and you can see when the order was actually placed and uh, when, when it was opened, and uh, you know how long has it been. Now, in something like a Bybit, you might have to uh, you know alternate and look at something like this, right? Average holding time, 1.5 days. Whereas for the other trader, that number is 4.83 days. So somebody who is staying lesser in time and still pulling out, making some profit, that is what matters. Drawdown percentage, this is extremely important, right? That's why I've highlighted it in green. Less than 20% is ideal. What is drawdown percentage? Um, now, imagine a, a trader started, um, you know, entered over here at this part of the curve, uh, that before he exits, right? Now, let's say he exited here. What was the highest that that particular stock or crypto moved and what was the lowest the difference between that is called a drawdown this is a paper loss it's not really a, a actual loss because it, it's not a loss till he exits it uh, this is important because the higher the percentage the more riskier that trade was if you look at this the maximum drawdown was about 44.8 percent for the other trader this particular number was 10.16 percent so somebody with a lower drawdown percentage is typically better because that means they are they are not being too risky. They know where to stop, right? So the uh, the ideal would be less than 20%. Then the last thing that you must look at is average trade size, right? So how do you find average trade size? In some websites you directly have it. In others you might have to look at this uh, these numbers here and it, uh, the past orders and it will give you an idea of what is the trade size that they're taking. I've consolidated the data in a particular chart here. Let me just open that up for you in a particular table rather. Now, in this particular table, I have um, sort of put together the same data for all the parameters that I had just spoken about. Average trade size for trader one is $4,800, whereas for trader two, it's $19,669. I would go with somebody who is betting on a smaller trade number because you know that every trade, if it goes south, then that's bad, right? So he's betting lower and he's trying to be consistent and more number of trades. So he is sort of hedged his risk across multiple trades. Now, consolidated, if you look at these two traders who I was just pointing you to, number of trading is 107 versus 33, right? Number of trades, percentage of winning trades, 827 versus 11, 87% strike rate, 91% strike rate for trader two. Followers and money made. Right, it's, uh, it's actually 207, uh, my mistake there. 47,000 uh, is the money made, 1,700 is the money made. Right, Number of open trades uh, or the average trading time rather, here it's 1.5 days, here it's 4.83 days. Lower the number, the better. Drawdown percentage, it's 10.16 for 44.8, less than 20% is typically ideal. Average trade size, 4,819,669. Uh, lower the number, the better. So going by all these parameters, although I've taken a very extreme example, you can see that Trader 1 is clearly better than Trader 2. Uh, these are some of the parameters that you can use uh, to judge who might be a better trader. So if I were you, I would go with Trader 1 and not really with Trader 2 to copy. Uh, that would be my strategy to follow for something like copy trading. Hope this helped. Uh, hope you like this video on copy trading. Uh, if you like this video, then do like and subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about it and welcome to the Wave Crypto Club. Stay tuned for more such amazing videos.